We've done many videos in the past about clone troopers who deserted the Grand Army of the Republic to side with the Separatists for various reasons. Oftentimes, these clones are painted as evil traitors, in contrast to their loyal brethren who are invariably depicted as righteous heroes. But loyalty to the Republic was no guarantee of heroism, quite the contrary in some cases. As we've discussed in the past, the Republic, especially during the Clone Wars, was every bit as evil as the Confederacy it waged war against, and many of the most loyal clones were also some of the most evil of their kind. In this video, we'll be discussing our picks for the three most evil clone troopers, all of whom were loyal to the Republic. Attention, Sergeant on deck! For long-time viewers of this channel, the units of our first evil clone should come as no surprise, the Coruscant Guard. It's well established that we hate the Coruscant Guard with a passion, especially Commander Fox, but we're being reasonably objective when we call this particular dude evil. But the evil clone commander we're talking about actually isn't Fox, it's Commander Thyre, formerly CC4477. You might know him as Lieutenant Thyre, as was his rank when he appeared in Star Wars The Clone Wars' very first episode. Thyre was one of three clone troopers to accompany Yoda on his mission to Rugosa, where Yoda successfully convinced King Katunko of Toydaria to allow the Republic to build a military base on his planet. Based on that mission alone, Thyre doesn't seem particularly evil, but after that mission to Rugosa, Thyre steadily climbed through the ranks eventually becoming a commander, and it's in that role that his true colours began to show. As we've discussed before, the Coruscant Guard as a whole was responsible for some abhorrent things during the Clone Wars. They were the prototype for the Imperial Police State, and over the course of the Clone Wars, they subjected Coruscant to mass surveillance, brutalization of protesters, random and unwarranted raids on the homes of poor and non-human citizens, and the deportation of all members of species deemed separatist sympathetic. All of that is evil in its own right, but Thyre is especially evil in that he spearheaded the expansion of these policies. Together with Armand Issard, the Director of Republic Intelligence, Thyre oversaw the formation of Homeworld Security Command, a joint police-military intelligence task force ostensibly aimed at protecting Coruscant from terrorist attacks. In practice, however, Thyre and Issard's brainchild was responsible for much more terror than it prevented. By 19 BBY, under Thyre's orders, the Coruscant Guard set up shock trooper checkpoints all over Galactic City, where civilians were ordered to present identification or face arrest and indefinite detention. Thyre's shock trooper squads also increased the surveillance of and raids on, on innocent citizens on Coruscant's lower levels. Of course, these patrols disproportionately preyed on non-humans who were often detained and brutally interrogated by the Coruscant Guard just for looking suspicious. Of course, Homeworld Security was a joint venture between Thyre and Issard, so there's no knowing how much of these abuses were actually Thyre's doing, especially since Issard was well known for being a hardcore fascist. But by the time Homeworld Security came into being, Thyre had replaced Fox as the Coruscant Guard's overall commander, so he at least consented to all of this, which is every bit as evil. Additionally, when Palpatine became Emperor, Thyre more or less became his personal clone liaison, accompanying him across the galaxy and carrying out his orders on Coruscant. Here's that one shock trooper commander Palpatine has with him in Revenge of the Sith on Mustafar, in case you didn't know. If any further proof that Thyre was evil was needed, Palpatine's trust in him is pretty damning in itself. Next up, we have a more obscure but just as evil clone, Commander Keller. We don't know too much about this clone aside from the fact that he was the clone liaison of Jedi General Sims during the Outer Rim sieges. During the Battle of Tula, Keller received Order 66 and promptly killed Sims, however, two other Jedi present for the battle managed to escape. After crushing Separatist forces on Tula, Keller focused his efforts on the hunt for the two fugitive Jedi, and he often resorted to extreme measures in a bid to capture them. In one notable instance, after the two Jedi fled to the city of Ithaqua Station, Keller put the entire city under strict martial law. 
Nobody in the city had consciously done anything to help the Jedi fugitives, but Keller decided to collectively punish them anyway, forcing a curfew on the city and sending his men house to house to conduct invasive searches. Keller showed no regard whatsoever for the people of Tula, and he was single-mindedly focused on the murders he had been ordered to commit. Ironically enough, Keller's harsh tactics proved his undoing. Because of the clone's abuses, it was easy for one of the fugitive Jedi to convince the patrons of one of Ithaqua Station's bars to attack Keller and his men when they came knocking, allowing the Jedi to escape what would have otherwise been a very tricky situation. This ultimately allowed both of them to escape the planet and this particularly nasty clone commander altogether. But neither Keller nor Thyre was as evil as the third clone on our list. Veterans of the channel probably know what's coming up. Commander Fey. This Sith spawn of a clone was perhaps the Republic's most loyal soldier, and we mean that as an insult. Fey was one of those guys who has no personality beyond loving the government, and he was extremely by the book. The man could barely even comprehend the thought of breaking even the smallest regulation, and he looked down on anyone who did. Unlike more sane by the book clones, like Commander Cody and Echo before they became based, Fey was abrasive and self-righteous about his unfailing devotion to the rules and the fact that he cared about nothing else. Commander Fey served under General Quinlan Vos during the Battle of Kashyyyk, and needless to say, he didn't get on well with the Jedi Order's most maverick master. When Order 66 came through, he was probably overjoyed. After shooting Luminara on Dooley in the back, Faye ordered his men to kill Voss by shelling his juggernaut tank, despite the fact that this would kill the several dozen clones accompanying Voss as well. But Voss survived this attempt on his life, and after Separatist forces on Kashyyyk were defeated, Faye devoted all his energy to hunting his former general down. Voss managed to evade the first few squads of clones Faye sent after him, so the commander eventually switched to a different tactic. After tracking the Jedi fugitive down to the outskirts of a Wookiee village, he threatened to call an airstrike on his position, which would kill him, Voss, and all of the innocent Wookiees in the surrounding area. Just like he didn't care about the clones in Voss's tank, Faye didn't care about the thousands of Wookiee civilians he was threatening, and he was prepared to murder all of them just to get one rogue Jedi. Fortunately, Voss gutted this scumbag before he could follow through. Lives didn't matter to Fey, only orders did. We would call him a living droid, but that would be doing a disservice to droids. Even the Confederacy's basic B1s showed more humanity than Fey did. He embodied the notion of good soldiers follow orders, and he puts on full display just how evil that sort of blind obedience is. It's always important to question orders or directives, to apply critical thinking and morality to any given situation. To not do so is to dehumanize oneself, to surrender all agency. Faye did all of that, and he was proud of it, which was pretty sick in its own right. Commanders Faye, Keller, and Thyre all clearly illustrate the same thing, that loyalty and obedience to the Republic weren't heroic virtues at all. Rather, it was loyalty to the Republic that made all of these clones so evil. Thaya's single-minded devotion to protecting the Republic from subversives hurt billions of people. Keller's devotion to his orders led him to brutalize a whole city over two people, and Faye's loyalty and slavish obsession with orders left him with no value for life, no real humanity of any kind. They would all have done better to follow the example of Sergeant Slick. Good soldiers do not simply follow orders, they think for themselves. But what do you think? Are there other evil clones you think we missed? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.